In today's video, I'll show you how to hide faces using emojis. I have a clip already inside my project. So the first thing I'll do is detach the audio because I don't need it. Tap on Detach Audio and then tap the trash can to delete the selected audio. Preparing your clip ahead of time makes the keyframing process easier. I'm going to play the clip until Monique raises her face to the camera, then I'll make a cut and delete my unwanted footage. Now the clip starts. With Monique looking directly at the camera, this will make it easier for me to position the emoji at the start of the clip. Next, I'll double tap the clip to open the clip editor. I'm going to resize and reposition the clip before I start. I just want to make sure that this clip fills the entire preview window. Now I'll go back to the main timeline and I'll add an emoji. An overlay title is used because we want the text to appear over top of the video. Position the playhead at the beginning of your clip, tap on the plus sign, and then tap on overlay title. Next, I need to make sure that the overlay title is the exact same length as the video clip. So I'll long press on the end of the overlay title and bring it out so it matches up with the end of my video clip. If I didn't do this, the emoji would disappear off the screen before the video was finished and Monique's face would be revealed. Make sure you're at the beginning of the clip and then double tap the top clip to open the clip editor. Tap where it says your text here on the title screen. When the keyboard comes up, tap and long press on the globe to select your emoji keyboard. You can choose any emoji you'd like. I'm going to use a smiley face. Tap on an emoji to select it and then tap done. As you can see there's an emoji on the screen. Most people think that the best way to resize something is using the size and position under frame and fit. But as I tap on frame and fit and then try to resize the emoji, notice that the position changes. Also, a really small image might become distorted. So this isn't the best way to resize a small object like an emoji. To do that, you'll want to go back to the title screen. Make sure that the emoji is exactly where you want it. Tap on title and use the size option underneath your text properties. This will ensure that the image stays in the same spot and does not become distorted as you resize it. If you need to return to the original size, double tap the dot in the center and it will return to the original size. I'll double tap on the dot to show you this. The emoji returns to its original size. Now you can resize it to cover your subject's entire face. That looks great. If you were hiding a face inside a still photo, this would do, but this is a video. Let me return to the main timeline. I'll play the clip and show you what happens and why keyframes will be necessary. I'll play the clip and watch what happens. It starts off right, but Monique eventually moves her face as she starts to talk. Notice that the emoji is still in the same position. I want the emoji to follow Monique's face, so I'll have to use some keyframes. Double tap the top clip once more, select frame and fit, and size and position. Drop a keyframe at the beginning of the clip. This is the starting position. Then, as your subject moves their face, just move the emoji to cover the face. 
Each time you move the emoji, a keyframe will be added. I'm going to speed this up and add the rest of the keyframes. Use the playback controls to advance forward frame by frame. All the keyframes have been added. Now let's go back to the beginning of the clip and I'll play the clip at normal speed. Watch as the emoji follows the movement of Monique's face. When you export the clip, don't change the resolution because if you do, it will make the video bigger or smaller and all of your keyframing will be off. Make sure that you export the clip at the default resolution of the project. That looks perfect. So I'll tap the export icon, tap on movie, tap on photos, and then tap the export icon in the upper right hand corner once more. Don't exit the app or lock your screen at any point. Once the export begins, don't interrupt it in any way. If you do, you'll have to repeat the process because the video will not export properly. Let's have a look at the final clip. I love Mike's videos. Please subscribe to his channel for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. For more great tutorials like the one you just saw, check out the links in the video description or one of these recommended videos.